Hello, I am Anthony Ramirez, a general chemistry peer leader for the University of Texas at El Paso, or UTEP. And today, I will be joined by peer leaders from UTEP and from the University of Texas at the Permian Basin, or UTPB, to discuss the beginning of a cross-campus collaboration inspired by the recent rise in online education. Specifically, this collaboration will take advantage of the different training methods that our universities utilize to train new and current peer leaders for the upcoming semesters. Peer-led team learning, or PLTL, is similar to the SI Pass PAL learning formats. However, there are distinct differences in their fundamental basis. PLTL is an educational format that uses peer leaders who are responsible for facilitating their peers' education through team-based activities and problem solving. Peer leaders operate through peer-led workshops, which are weekly, two-hour-long sessions of six to eight students that must be taken in conjunction with the lecture course. I will now pass your attention to Jacob Nahera, one of UTEP's head general chemistry peer leaders who will provide insight about the peer leader's role in the online format. Hi, my name is Jacob Nahera, and I am a second semester general chemistry peer leader. I was a peer leader during the spring 2020 semester and witnessed the transition from in-person workshops to online workshops. The main difference is, was that in the in-person workshops, I was able to actually witness the engagement of students firsthand. I was able to have eye-to-eye -eye contact and personal connections with these students. And if I saw that they were on the phone, I can stop that immediately and see if they were actually actively engaging in the activities that were planned. When switching to online, we had to develop creative ways to make their students engaged so that we know that they're not entirely on their phones and that we can retain their concentration for a lot longer. When you're online and staying at home, it's very hard to res uh, resist being on your phone or looking off because of something that you thought was boring. So it is our jobs as peer leaders to keep that engagement high, make sure that we're using creative activities and make sure that our students are actually engaged and not just sitting around doing nothing. Continuing on, Course instructors are directly involved in the selection of workshop materials, which must be appropriately challenging and directly relate to course methods of assessment. Instructors are also responsible for training and supervising peer leaders, preparing them with the appropriate skill set to effectively facilitate group work and activities. To give you more insight on this, I will now pass your attention to Anid Martinez, one of UTEP's general chemistry peer leading officers. My name is Anid Martinez and I am a second semester general chemistry peer leader. In our organization, we take part in a week long training before every new school term. Training is organized by the most experienced peer leaders and officers for new and returning peer leaders with the approval of faculty supervisors. This training is geared towards building teamwork, developing new and exciting learning activities, and providing the necessary tools for all peer leaders to be successful in the workshop. During the ongoing school term, the peer leaders meet twice a week for preview with the faculty supervisors. During these meetings, the peer leaders and faculty share experiences with students from workshop and lecture to gauge the general level of comprehension the enrolled students are exhibiting. Preview is a time when peer leaders receive regular advice from each other and the professors involved. And it is also a time to discuss problem solving strategies, upcoming exams, events, and deadlines. It is especially important that the PLTO program is supported by the department and institution with funds, course status, and other methods to promote the spread of PLTL to other courses and disciplines. The general chemistry programs at UTEP and UTPB are supported by funds from the Lead for America Corporation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting PLTL program development and providing materials and financial support through profits from general chemistry workbook sales. With that in mind, I would like to clear the stage for our collaborators from UTPB who will discuss their experiences in the newly established General Chemistry PLTL program at UTPB and how they are adapting to the online format. My name is Michaela Rodriguez and I am a peer leader here at the University of Texas Permian Basin in Odessa. I began peer leading during the fall 2020 semester where I facilitated an online only workshop for General Chemistry 1 students. Currently, I am serving as a General Chemistry 2 peer leader, however, I am facilitating my workshop in the face-to-face -face format. Here at UTPB, peer leading officially started on the fall 2020 semester. 
But before that, on the previous semester in the spring 2020, we had a pilot for the Dr. Montes course to see how it would work here at GTPB. Uh, she was held by Jonathan and Idelie, who were the original peer leaders, and they again tried to see how peer leading would work here at GTPB. And apparently it was a success because after that we were able to establish the program for all Gencan courses, and that's when I joined the program. UTEP's contribution to UTPB has been huge again since the beginning. Uh, I remember going to El Paso uh, before the semester of fall 2020 started. They invited us there to their training and they saw us how they train their peer leaders and how they run their program. And again, to this day, they keep helping us. Uh, we use the very same workbooks that they use in their, in their workshops. Uh, with the selling of those books, uh, we can finance our program. Uh, so yeah, they have played a big role and they still play a big role in our development. Here at UTPB, peer leaders have two main responsibilities. They have the office hours and the workshop. Um, for every workshop that you have, you should have an office hour. So for example, I have two workshops, so I also have two office hours. Um, during that time, during the office hours, the students can come ask questions or they can just have a talk with the peer leader. But if they don't come, the peer leader usually uses that time to grade or to prepare the activities for the week. But again, the main responsibility is workshop. That's where the peer leader meets with the students on a weekly basis and that's where they practice problems, they do the activities and they get along. Often at times, I've noticed that students come into a difficult course such as chemistry with a negative attitude and a sense of anxiety and intimidation. And I believe that as a peer leader, having previously taken and passed this course, it is my responsibility to discuss with my students and let them know, hey, these concepts, they are quite difficult. However, they are attainable. This is how you can attain them and so on and so forth. Another responsibility is the discussion that goes behind informing and um, relating with your students the intentions and the time that goes behind planning their course material, their activities, their lectures, their workshops. And so the position of a peer leader is quite interesting in that you can serve as a bridge between the faculty members who are teaching these courses and the students who are taking these courses. Uh, something that I know that we do different from UTEP is how we assign and prepare the modules. Uh, in, at UTEP, I know that each leader has to prepare their own module for the week and they are on their own kind of way. Uh, but here at UTPB, at the beginning of the semester, we assign uh, the modules at the beginning. So each leader is assigned some of the modules at the beginning of the semester. And then one of the peer leaders prepares the activities on module for the week and the rest of the peer leaders adapt to that. Uh, we do that so that we save time and we are on the same page. Due to UTPB is a small campus, uh, we have been able to keep some face-to-face -face interaction. In March, when everything was shut down, we have to move online and kind of rush and do our best to finish the courses. But this last semester, campus reopened. So we were able to come back and the program offered both face-to-face -face and online workshops. In online workshops, uh, we tried to improve the experience from what we learned during the quarantine. And in face-to-face -face workshops, we have always followed the safety rules. Um, but this has somewhat limited experience. As an online-only peer leader, some of my responsibilities included lesson plans in which I did my best to plan activities to maintain um, student engagement, which was often difficult, as we all know, is a challenge in online education. I found myself having to constantly um, change activities, find new activities, and make sure that our workshops weren't too consistent. Otherwise, I noted that students were beginning to lose interest in the workshop and their coursework itself. Here at UTPB, this last fall semester, we offer different formats of workshop. Uh, we offer full online, full in-person, and hybrid. 
in my case both of my workshops were in person uh, except for the last week which we have to go online because campus was gonna close after Thanksgiving so my last workshop was online in in-person workshops uh, we had to follow a strict regulations so that we could protect the lives and health of our students uh, some that come to my mind is social distancing for sure uh, students needed to stay on the table students needed due to the pandemic in in-person workshops we have to follow strict regulations so that we could protect the lives and health of our students uh, some of the regulations that come to my mind is social distancing uh, students have to stay on their own tables only the peer leader was allowed to go to the board uh, if they had symptoms and they were feeling sick we told them not to come and quarantine and they have to attend an online session and another one that we also follow was that the class size was severely restricted to the point that some peer leaders have to be in two classes at the same time uh, our classes are connected by a door so it wasn't a big deal but the student the peer leader have to be explaining the activities uh, in both classes which it was time consuming Throughout the semester, I did note that some of my peers who were conducting face-to-face -face workshops were being impacted by student absences causative to mandatory quarantine periods. In contrast to them, I do believe that I was of great benefit in that my students weren't particularly impacted by these quarantine periods because we were already expected to meet online and not face-to-face. And so I do believe that this was a great benefit to my students and my workshop facilitation. Many of the veteran peer leaders graduated last spring, uh, so almost all the peer leaders were new. Thus, they didn't have to adapt to the situation, but learn how to deal with it. At GTPB, the Success Center trains the peer leaders. Uh, Director Fierro prepares a training which helps tutors, SIs, and peer leaders understand what would be the best approach to their sessions. And besides, uh, every Monday, the peer leaders had a meeting with Dr. Feynman and Dr. Dreyfus, in which they learned many other things that could be applied to their workshops. If there is something true about the future, is that new technologies are gonna play a predominant role in it. This pandemic has taught both the peer leaders and the students how to adapt to them and how to use them in their own benefit. The main goal of the peer leader is to develop the critical thinking of his students. And even though in all sessions might be harder, our aim remains the same. Last semester, the UTPB peer leaders met on a weekly basis with Dr. Freeman and Dr. Dreyfus. In those meetings, we were presented with activities and lectures that will help us develop our percep perception and awareness. And we also discussed what we would cover for the week and sometimes we discuss some problems that we had in our workshops and what would be the best approach to solve them thanks to the expertise of Dr. Dreyfus and Dr. Freiman and the tips of some of the veteran peer leaders this was very beneficial because we were able to face those problems more effectively and quickly and in my opinion the most beneficial thing that I get out from these meetings is again that that perception that awareness because it helped me understood what type of learners I could have in my workshops and what would be the best approach to show them the material that I had prepared for the week and I think this was a great collaboration and I think for you to join us would be awesome uh, they have been helping us since the beginning, they have funded us, they have trained us, and I think it's due for us to, to help them. I think we can show them what we have learned on our own. And as a scientist, I know how important it is to gather data and share it to, to other people. And I think only good things can come out of this collaboration. This brings us back to the proposed collaboration between the General Chemistry PLTL programs at UTEP and UTPB. 
the peer leaders at UTPV received a formal weekly education about different facilitation techniques that they could employ in their workshops. These weekly sessions provided them with opportunities to create and practice new group activities that would emphasize the facilitation technique that they learned that week. These sessions were responsible for a level of structure and unity seen in the UTPB chemistry workshops that differed from the structure seen in the UTEP chemistry workshops. Both the UTEP and the UTPB peer leaders used general chemistry workbooks to provide structure for the material that must be covered during workshop. However, the UTEP peer leaders have the freedom to deploy any given activity or facilitation technique for a given week in their workshop, unlike the UTPB peer leaders who collectively learn and practice new techniques and activities every week, which all their peer leaders use during their workshops. These differences create diversity among the peer leaders, which this collaboration will capitalize on. The UTEP peer leaders will attend the same weekly sessions that the UTPB peer leaders currently attend. Both parties will learn about a given technique for that week, and they will be given an opportunity to practice using a new activity that employs that week's facilitation technique. Following the example set by UTPB, teams of two to four peer leaders from both campuses will collaborate to create the week's activity which all peer leaders will use during their workshops. They will learn about their assigned technique beforehand, and they will have until the week that their technique will be presented to complete their activity. This will, <clears throat> this will prevent any peer leader from becoming overburdened from expectations to create and use new activities every week. Once the semester ends, the peer leaders will write about their experiences in an essay and survey. The peer leaders will detail challenges, opportunities, and successes in their essays. The peer leaders will also be surveyed about the collaborative experience and how it can be improved moving forward. This collaboration will result in new techniques and strategies that will be implemented into workshops, which will foster unique experiences for peer leaders and their students. The peer leaders will directly benefit from this collaboration as they will have the opportunity to work alongside peers from outside their campus and city. The peer leaders will gain experience in cross-campus communication, online collaboration, and new facilitation techniques. The students will be the ultimate beneficiaries of this collaboration because they will be exposed to a variety of techniques and activities that will reinforce the group dynamic facilitated by the peer leaders. As the programs collaborate and further align their courses and course objectives, opportunities to pursue more complex collaborations arise. One avenue is exploring a cross-campus student collaboration, which pushes group discussions and activities that transcend the workshop and lecture components. This will further develop technical and non-technical communication among students. Another avenue is to explore collaborations with other universities in an effort to generate new discussions regarding group work and incentivizing supplemental study. This is especially relevant in regards to universities that use the SI Pass Pal format. The differences in the peer leading and SI Pass Pal formats provide opportunities to explore new methods to optimize student education in flipped classroom or Socratic environments and methods to incentivize self study. At this time, I would like to conclude this presentation by thanking the peer leaders from UTPB for their cooperation in this endeavor. I would like to thank LFAC for providing the financial support that made this presentation possible. And I would like to thank Seth Van Matre for his assistance in putting this video together. And I would like to thank all of you for watching this presentation. Thank you.